It sure has been a while for the 1UP Turbo Truck Series since our last race at Irwindale, but it is so good to be back here in on the East Coast this time for race number 9 of the 2024 season, and we are here at the Boston International Speedway for another 60-lap contest around this tight one-mile oval that is sure to test the driver's patience and their tempers because there's a lot of opportunities for beating and banging against one another here at this Boston Speedway. And alongside me to bring you the action, as per usual, is Ryan Griffin once again. Well, this is going to be a very interesting race because we only have four races left until the playoff cut point. And as of right now, there are, I believe, seven drivers separated by just six points heading into this race. It's at this point... Pardon the pun here, but it's at this point every point matters. Every every spot, every position, every gain on the racetrack could mean the difference between making these playoffs and not making these playoffs. And now is when you have to quote unquote, now is when you have to cross you cross your T's and dot your I's and make sure you take care of the little things because what you take care of you let one thing go, it could cost you a chance to make it the playoffs. So We'll, we'll see um, see if everybody cross their I's and tots their T's today. Absolutely. There's a lot of opportunities to get, get it right here at Boston, but there's just as many opportunities to get it wrong. And after a long break for these truck drivers, they've got to make sure they don't make any mistakes tonight because, like you said, the playoffs are fast approaching. As we can now bring you the starting lineup for tonight's 60-lap event, Brandon Smith takes pole position. It's his first of the season. He's got Cal Farrell alongside him. These two have been fun to watch all year. Both are looking for their, for, for their first win of the year, Farrell, for the first of his career. And right behind them, we've got a superstar driver moonlighting in the truck series, Jeffrey Finguy and the number 90 this week. He qualified a season-best third for that team. We'll see what he can do against the truck series regulars. But back in row four, we have the two teammates that are leading the point standings, DJ Curtis and Brian Grigsby. Those two have been really fun to keep our eye on. They've both won this season, but who do you think is the first one to get to two wins this season? I think if I, if I had to put my money, the money would be on would be on Curtis. But again, we'll see. I mean, Curtis has been very consistent this year. There's only two races he hasn't finished in the top ten this year of the eight we've run. So I, money's on Curtis. I think he's. I think he easily is the title favorite. But we'll see. We'll see what happens here today. We could have a different winner today too. So very easily could have a different one winner today. So I, I think it's just going to be a matter. We just have to let it play out. And see which of these truck uh, guys can take it. So with that being said, we have 60 laps ahead of the drivers tonight. We are ready to bring you that action from the Boston International Speedway. This is the 1UP Turbo Truck Series from Boston, race number 9 of the year, and the green flag is moments away from getting this great race underway. As the pace car makes a very hard left turn on the pit road, Smith and Farrell lead us to the green flag. It is now in the air. We're underway at Boston for 60 laps, and it's fairly even for the first three, first three rows. Grigsby gets the advantage over his teammate, DJ Curtis, but going off in the turn one for the first time, it is Brandon Smith who holds the lead of this race, and he's bringing Jeffrey Finguy with him. Yeah, you got the, the front train there, three Fords in the top three spots to start the day. We'll see if they can remain there. But Smith is going to have the advantage, and Smith will lead the first lap. Then guy going to slide into second. Farrow back to third, and I believe that is the eight truck up to fourth. Is there? Oh, Grigsby up the track a little bit there. Yeah, he was trying to Gutierrez. fend off. He was trying to fend off a three wide advance from Eugene Stoyan in that seven truck for Logan Sport, that Logan Williams owns Toyota team, but. Off a of turn four to complete the second lap, Grigsby maintains his advantage out front, but here comes Jeffrey Finguy. Didn't take him much time at all to get to the lead of this race. He's getting underneath Brandon Smith. Off a of turn two, this should be a relatively easy pass. And for Finguy coming in here with these, this the start here in this 90, you know, both his trucks leading the championship coming into this race. So, you know, he's got to be happy with what he's seeing. Granted, it's, it's, it's early, it didn't take it a lead, but still, it, He's got to be happy with where his trucks are at so far this year, but Smith, quick to get back to the inside of Finn Guy and try to retake that top spot. What a crossover move from Brandon Smith to get to the inside of Finn Guy just as soon as he lost the lead. He's on the on the gas to get it right back. 
but he looks like he has to settle back in for the moment because Finn Guy now has a single car length lead, half a car length now. As the caution flies for the first time today, we've got a big crash in turn three and four. Looks like it's taking Ludovic Charette at least out of the running on lap number five. Yeah, so it looks like a three truck jam up there in three and four. Yeah, Samantha Jade, Jeremy Frey with a ton of damage. He was looking forward to getting this season back on track, but it's going to probably end early for the 48 here tonight. Samantha Jade with a ton of damage as well in the 25. She was right on the playoff cut line going into this race, so that's going to be a big blow to her playoff hopes, as it looks like this is a bit too early for these guys to make a pit stop here, so it looks like everybody's going to stay out under this caution as the rest of the field gets sorted out here. Yeah, but a pretty kind of entertaining first couple of laps here amongst the leaders. We'll see if, if what continues on here. Yeah, Jeremy Frey does make the left turn on the pit road. He was so looking forward to this race. He thought he had an opportunity tonight. But sadly, it's going to be all for naught, and he will be out within the first five laps of this one. Tough break. So Charette was at the top of three wide, and it looks like he's going to get a little help. No! Jeremy Frey hooked the back of Mike White in that 38, sends him into a slide. Shreyok in the 90, Andrew Lyons, who is right on the cut line. That's a lot more trucks in that wreck than we had originally seen. Bronson Minnick in the 96 also involved. Yeah, and it looks like it was just a matter of once the truck that got that got turned out of the out of the pack and turned back the track, you know, try to gather it back up, you come back up, and there's that we're on the cut line, they're gonna be uh Pretty rough shape. Yeah, so it was we just a again. Slight, it was just the slightest of touches from Jeremy Frey into Mike White that touched off this wreck. Henry Brown got a little piece of it as well in the 70. Minnick we already mentioned. Ludovic Charette with some heavy contact. Samantha Jade. It looks like most of these trucks will be able to continue, but for Ludovic Charette, Samantha Jade, and Jeremy Frey, all of them will be knocked out of this race before we've even hit lap 10. Tough break for all three of those drivers, but they'll have to gather it back up, get ready for next race, because their day is done early here at Boston. Yeah, it's only... I, I believe we got three races to go after today, and this is... Yeah, this is not what you want if you're on the cut line, you know? You don't want to race where you're damaged and have a poor result this close this close to the playoffs and this close with, with as close as it is, so... As I started in the opening, you, 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 you got to clean up the little things and, you know, get caught up in early wreck is definitely not going to help you. Yeah, we have we only have four races left until the playoffs get underway. Two road courses, the short track at IRP, and then the unique Darlington Raceway to cap it all off. So there's not a lot of chances left for those guys to get a move on, get their playoff hopes sorted out again. But we're only half a lap away from this restart, and Jeffrey Fingai is going to take us back to the green here shortly. Interesting to see if um, if Fingai can continue where he's at now because he, he fired off so good on the initial start of the race. I'm interested to see if he can maintain where he's at. Obviously, it looked like Grant Smith was ready to, to to duke it out with him as far as battle for the lead. So I think Smith feels that he's got a, a equal truck, if not better truck. So. I believe we'll see what he, happens I believe on the restart. It, because this this 90 truck, not one of the better teams, but it's got a, an elite level driver behind the wheel. Maybe that'll balance it out as the green flag flies once again. Brandon Smith wasting no time getting to the inside to try and take the lead back from Jeffrey Finga. He's bringing Santi Messi in the number eight with him. Brian Grigsby in the 92 is trying to come along as well. And Yojin Stoyan in that seven trying to follow through as well. Finga dropping like a rock on the restart. Oh. It's interesting. It's almost as if they built a run on Finn guy because it almost looks like he didn't fire off the way he wanted to on that restart. But I'm I'm more or less watching you know, watching this eight truck, watching the seven truck, the ninety two, these trucks that have joined the fray that have joined the fray here and you know, we got some more players now. Yeah. Well we thought we were gonna have anyway. Yeah, the the 8 and the 15, I feel, are going to be very strong contenders. They're pulling away from the rest of the field here. As Smith dives to the inside once again, he wants to lead back from from Ter Messi in the 8. And look at that. They've set identical lap times on the board to post the fastest lap of the race together that last lap. 
So they've both got a point for that currently, but we'll see if they're able to hold on to it in the remaining 50 laps of this race. And we'll see, because I, I, I'm keeping my eye on that 90 bit that I usually get almost like caught like light blue number 92, but Grigsby, we were talking earlier about, you know, which one of the, the, the teammates who are currently lead the standings could be the first one to win their second race this season. Grigsby's making a good case right now that, hey, it it's going to be me. And he's making a good case for it right now as he tries to look for second on Brandon Smith. Yeah, and looking for her back, Cal Farrell trying to stick his nose back into the action. He's getting underneath Stoyan for fourth spot. Angel Gutierrez right there. And right behind him is his teammate for this weekend, Joshua Michaels, making his Truck Series debut. He's started 13th solidly now into the top 10. And we see what happened to Finga. Finga has now fallen to 10th is where he's last scored, just behind the his the truck he owns, the current series point leader coming into the day, DJ Curtis. He had a 38-point lead on Grigsby coming into the day. Right now, Grigsby running better than Curtis on track. But we'll see if that holds to the end of the day. Is Grigsby again going to dive after Smith? And he better watch out because that 16 truck is looking and he is... Is getting bigger in his mirror as well. It's been so entertaining to watch the progress of Seismic Motorsports and Cal Farrell this season. They they were they were a relative unknown going into this season. They hadn't started a race before. Farrell hadn't started a race in several years. But they rattled off a bunch of top tens this season. I believe they're batting 500 for top tens this season. Four out of eight races. And he's currently 15th in the points. He could very well make a playoff push as Smith goes to the inside for the lead once again. I remember what I said. You know, if, as long as you're, you, as long as you're, you're, you're crossing your T's and dotting your eyes and, and taking care of the little things, that you keep getting better each week. You look no further than that 16 and what they've done, and now they got himself in a position to possibly make a, a run to try to make the playoffs. So, and with the issues out of some of the bubble guys today. This is a big opportunity for that 16 team as Smith does get the lead back. The eight falls to second. Grigsby still holds third. Farrell, we've mentioned, is fourth. And Gutierrez in fifth. Yeah, the, And we're yeah. going we're gonna to have maybe another lead, another battle for the leaders. The eight now looks back on Smith. Yeah, this has been really fun to watch at the, for the first third of this race. We've had Finn Guy lead for a while. Brendan Smith held the lead for a good chunk of the race. Messi's led a couple laps, but I would not be surprised if it, they, they're joined by a couple more contenders by the end of the night. As it looks like Grigsby, he's going to try and make a, maybe a three-wide move for the lead. He thinks better of it, stays in line behind the eight. Yeah, I, think he, I think he started to assist the eight, but then he got such a run, he, he may have thought for a split second he could have made it three-wide going into three, but he thinks the better of it sticks in behind the eight and looks like he may take over second here. Yeah, Gutierrez is now trying to sneak the third here behind Grigsby. I was going to say, yeah, he's bringing Gutierrez with him, but now to 72, he's looking for his first career win in the Truck Series after a long time of waiting. Could this be tonight for him as he moves up now? Alongside Brandon Smith for the third position, crossing the line to complete lap number 20 here. These guys are still side-by-side -side for the position, and Grigsby now to the inside of Messi for the lead. He's got a, he got a nice little run. I watched him. He went high there in three and four. Got a good run down the, the front straightaway. Cut low and went underneath the eight as ooh, Smith. That was maybe close. slight contact with that the eight, was, if any. That, if that if there was no contact, I will be amazed. But Grigsby did hold on to lead that lap. But that eight truck is not giving up his ground on the top of the racetrack. But he might eventually have to cede the position to Brian Grigsby. But that was it a very close moment that could have if it had gone slightly differently really defined this race yeah well we saw there was almost i, I noticed it too there was a, almost a similar moment the previous lap between grigsby and smith before grigsby made that move for the lead so yeah these guys are so these guys are getting racy i mean we still gotta we're only a third of the way through this race there's still two thirds we gotta go but these guys want to race and you know after the break they had <laughs> Makes sense that they want to get racy, as, as we see there's a couple other players up here. The Six Truck is here, Curtis is now up here. Yeah, and that's. The Smith now going to try to take back second. Yeah, and you said it, that Six Truck is up into fourth. That's being driven by Joshua Michaels. We said he was making his first rear truck start here tonight for Robbers Racing, doing an excellent job keeping the momentum going. 
after a near win in the Superstar Series last time out. He's having a strong run here tonight, and he's trailing the three leaders by just a little bit, and I would not be surprised if he was contending by the end of the night. It's amazing what a good run, in, no matter what the series, what a good run in a race can do as far as your confidence builder when you go to the next whatever race it is, whether you're running the truck, whether you're running here in the trucks or the National Series, or the, even the Superstar Series, how much a good run can put that confidence in you that, hey, we can run good, we can do this, and you know, look no further than Michaels. You know, you had that the runner-up finish out the Superstar race, and it's almost as if he came here with this confidence, hey, I, I can get out here, I can compete with these guys, I can win, and here he is. And again, Cal Farrell's still hanging back there, that green 16, just, you don't think about him until all of a sudden he's there, so keep your eye on him. I think he's still going to be a factor before the night's over. I think the entire top five are going to be factors in this race, and don't count out the guys further back, because you got Curtis back there. Justin Whitmer's entered the, the party now in seventh place. Gutierrez is there. Finn guy's still lurking in the top ten. The, these guys are all proven to be good drivers, and I would not be surprised if any of them make runs at it. But here comes Michaels to the inside of both Smith and Messi to take the second spot away. Yeah, and while we were discussing that, Grigsby did pull out a little bit of a lead on this group as Michaels does take over the second position. And it, it'll be interesting to hear because this is probably the biggest lead we've seen so far in this race. We'll see if Michaels can run down Grigsby and close that gap as Smith is, looks like he might take over. Th uh, not quite this time. Oh, that was, battle continues between him and the eight. Yeah, but he was close, though, and I think he's going to get it in one and two. That eight's going to wander up the track a little bit, give the 15 a little chance to clear himself, and there he goes, Brandon Smith up to third place as we quickly approach halfway. We're approaching halfway, Grigsby out front, Michael second, Smith in third. Again, we mentioned other guys, and it's interesting, even the two guys that have kind of fallen off that were up here. Oh, we got trouble again. Caution, flag flies. For the second time tonight, you see the pace car pull out, and I believe it was the 11 of Earl Sear that's put us under the caution this time around. Tough break for Earl Sear making his first truck start of the season for Crossroads Racing, but that's going to put us under caution, and that's going to put everybody in their fuel window. They can easily make it from here. You know, I, was, I was getting ready to say before we had that caution that you know even the two guys we saw kind of fall back out of the top five, Finn Guy and Gutierrez, were still hanging there in the top ten. So I, re I really don't think we can count anybody out of the top ten yet. Granted, my, until that yellow Greeks we had the biggest lead I think we've seen so far in this race. So we'll see what happens after these stops and see where everybody comes out and see if we can see some new players. <laughs> But that's going to be the key. Who gets a good pit stop here? Because it's probably going to be the only one these guys are going to make for this race. So you got to be picture perfect on this cycle to see everybody making the trip down pit road to get four fresh tires, full tank of fuel to make it to the end of this race. We'll see who wins the race off pit road. Looks like Grigsby's got the edge. And he yep. lead, yeah, he leads Michaels off of pit road. Smith and Messi third and fourth. Looks like everybody's going to hold their position. Uh, I, I, I did see one position swap. Looked like Farrell and Curtis swap positions. So, for the most part, though, for the uh, most part, it looks like most, uh, pretty much the rest of the top five looks like is going to stay the same except for that one swap. So Sierra was running around twenty fourth, right behind his teammate Ethan Robinson. Whoa! He gets hooked by the 89. He's getting their hook together for so long. You'd think they'd be able to save it, but eventually something had to give, and Earl Sear goes for a slow slide off of turn two. No harm, no foul, but he's going to lose a lot of track position. I'm honestly actually surprised that that was a yellow because it was such a slow spin for Sear, and he, he did pretty much keep it on the apron of the track, so. Kind of surprised with the decision to throw the yellow there, but. Again, it helps these teams because, again, they all pretty much make their stop here. And, oh, we got somebody in trouble on pit road. That's Justin Browning in the nine truck. He started shotgun on the field tonight. With, and something is amiss with this truck. I, 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 we'll get you 
We'll figure out what it is eventually, but for now, it's a mystery to us as Browning now sits on pit road, about to go a second lap down, as the field looks like it should be getting the one to go signal this time, and they do. Actually, we had, we had a couple of changes here, actually, to the top 10, because I know Smith back up now to second. Yeah, he, got, he, he did stop. get out ahead of Michaels in that sixth truck. I must have missed that. But we do have some new players in the top 10. I talked about Justin Whitmer in the seventh position, that second green truck right behind Farrell. And how about the third green truck in your shot, the 44 of Romashko, the new, the new hire from Ferenko Racing. The Ukrainian driver makes his way up to ninth. He, this is only his second career start. He's doing a good job up here. Like I said, momentum, building momentum can help sometimes, and, you know, it's the second ever started. It's up to shoot for, you know? And he's running ahead of a Superstar Series veteran in Jeffrey Finguy, so something's got to be going right for him. But the field now bunches up behind Brandon Smith and Brian Grigsby, your two leaders, as we get back underway just past the halfway point. Now, on the last restart, we saw Fingo was a sitting duck. I'm curious to see what happens to Grigsby here as Smith is going to try to take advantage. As Browning and he does is going to get it. Pits. Browning does get out of pit road, but he's going to be at least three laps down as a result of this. But look at Michaels. He's diving to the inside of Brandon Smith with a push from his fellow Chevrolet in that eight of Messi and Joshua Michaels in his first career truck start to the lead on lap 34. And again, I'm, I'm watching Grigsby. We saw the same thing happen to Finn Guy. It, I don't think you want to be the leader on the restart because it seems like the leader just gets swallowed up, unless uh, obviously the initial start of the race, but it looks like the leader just gets swallowed up. Yeah. Yeah, Grigsby didn't fall back too far. He's back to fifth, but... Yeah, and you saw Browning cycle out into the middle of the field. He is back on pace, but multiple laps down now. But Michaels holds the lead of the race. Messi and Smith still hold the fastest lap together, and they're going to need to put some more of those down if they're going to catch Joshua Michaels because he's built up about a 5-6 car length lead. I think at this point, if you're the leader with building the lead, because we saw Grigsby have this lead earlier, you just don't want to see a caution at a restart because it seems like both restarts we've seen... The leader on the restart has has lost like three or four spots off the drop of the green, and so maybe it's just something with being in that position. I, I don't know. That's that's strange to see that. Now you see Messi getting underneath Smith for second spot, and look at that, Janeda in the 46. He's taken the fastest lap point away from these two, but 23.91. That's wicked fast around here in race trim. He's got the fastest lap to himself now. And how about this? This 44 truck of Ramashko, I was talking about him earlier. He's made his way all the way up to six. He might lose a few spots here to Grigsby and Villa Lobos. He's just entered the top 10 for the first time, but still a very strong run for a driver still learning his craft on ovals. Also, don't look now. Here he comes at, at 22 of Curtis up to P4. Looks like they're gonna. he's going to help Brandon Smith by the eight. See if he tries to make a move as, as Gutierrez trying to follow him up through there. And Grigsby also going to follow those two. Yeah, they're all trying to train their way past the eight, and it looks like Curtis has now shoved Smith out of the way. He wants to make a move up to second. I don't think Curtis had a choice. I think he had that 72 up his rear bumper two, giving him the assist. So he's like, okay, I'll go ahead and take advantage of this. Well, now we're going to see what Michaels actually has, because Curtis up to P2. We'll see if Curtis actually has anything for Michaels here. As Gutierrez is through to third, and Grigsby going to retake the fourth spot, it looks like, as they drop kick Smith. And Messi, they're, they're fading a little bit. Back to about fifth. Ooh, Grigsby, Grigsby, I think, just put the bumper to Gutierrez as he was getting the bumper put to him by the 66. Is there three wide on the back stretch for third? Oh, this is going to be really tight between these guys. They're six, seven trucks under a blanket for position. This is going to be really tight, but it looks like they all sorted out. No harm, no foul. They live to race another day. And Grigsby holds on to the moment for third place. But Villa Lobos and now Logan Jones in that 84 making a run at him as Curtis gets underneath Michaels for the lead. I said, once I saw him up to fourth and he got free and took over that second, I was like, I think Michaels is going to... 
is going to have to run because I think Curtis is coming to the front. And as he's coming to the front, so is his teammate right behind him. Grigsby up the third, and he is closing the gap on the two of those as the on those two as well. But remember, Michaels isn't racing for points down here. The other two are, so they've got to keep think big picture as well. If they have a rough night, crash out. Remember, we only have three trucks out of this race. If they crash out now, fighting for the lead and finish 38th and 39th, they're going to have a huge points deficit to build to back up. I'm going to Canadian Tire next time out, and I'm not, we don't know how these guys are going to do out there. So they got to race tough. They race Michaels hard, but they also got to race smart if they want to keep their top two in the championship. Yeah, but at the same time, I think both these trucks right now are quicker than Michaels at this point. And if they have a chance to, hell, they got an opportunity here to go 1-2 for FPM. So, you know, if that opportunity is ahead of them, I'm sure they're going to try to take it as we look back here. So the rest of the top ten as Farrell races Smith right now. I believe that is for... Ninth, wow. It was for ninth, okay. Yeah, so Smith, well, yeah, Smith and Messi... Smith definitely really, fell. And, and so is Messi. He's falling out all the way back to 14th now. So maybe they got their adjustments all wrong for the long run, but either way, they are not running as fast as they were before because they are getting freight trained on the inside by guys like Francois Chastain, who we haven't talked about all day. Cameron Lassard now up to 7th. Yeah, you mentioned the 66 earlier up here now in, in the top five, running in four. So, yeah, we, I, I said it after the pit stop. I said we could see some change in players here. We did see. We, that's what we've seen. Although these guys up here we, we, we've talked about already, but it is interesting to see how the top ten changes after, could can change a little bit after uh, a pit stop. And remember... We have, we've got all four of the robbers racing trucks up in the top ten now. So these, there, there might be a little team play going on, not just between the Fingai Saitomi trucks, but between robbers racing as well. Granted, Michaels is out in the, in the lead all by himself, but you got Villa Lobos, Gutierrez, and Lassard back there, fourth, fifth, and seventh in the same pack. They've got to be thinking, we got to get up there, dice it up with these FPM trucks, and try and get a robbers racing victory, no matter who it goes to. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that's, again, we, uh, I'm sure, I was, I'm sure that's probably what's happened between the FBM, FBM guys as well, as they know that, hey, if we can get up here and maybe get a possible 1-2, you know, it, 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 when you get more than one of your trucks in a position like this, you want to see as an owner, you want, you would love to see your, your trucks run 1-2 and, 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 or one two three or one two three four, depending on how many trucks you have. But you know, it's just kind of neat to see this, and I'm sure the owners are loving this. But at the same time, they're still thinking in the back of their mind, "Don't crash each other." So, as it looks like Lassard just took over the sixth position, and Jones. So yeah, it's a great run for Lassard. I don't believe he's had a top ten finish since his win at Phoenix. But looking back up at the front of the field, DJ Curtis getting a run, another run on Michaels. He breaks early going into turn one, but that'll let him get onto the gas a lot sooner. And it looks like they're going to hold steady down the back straightaway. Yeah, he, really, he had looked. I think Kurt, what Curtis is trying to do is what we saw when Grigsby made the move earlier for the lead. You try to get this run here off of four, stretch it down the front straightaway, so you can try to take a shot down on one and two. The problem is, is I think the, the little higher lane, I think, is preferred down here when you exit a one and two. Oh, trouble. So Tur trouble to... on the front straightaway. A big pile up. In the, going into turn one, Aguo Zhao upside down. Ethan Robinson involved. Mike White again. Kyle Roberts in his truck debut out of this race. Ky Kyler Sistry, Alex San Vital. A lot of trucks involved in this wreck that's going to send us into a late race restart. This race is going to be turned on its head. And what's going to be interesting is we've seen already in the two restarts that you really don't want to be the leader. The leader last two restarts has been put in a position where they've lost the lead. So we'll have to see if that possibly continues here. And if it, do, if it does, it could end up being the determiner for who wins the race. So Absolutely. this big mess on the front straightaway. Everybody's still trying to slow down here on the front straightaway after this. And at this Big point, incident. at this point, if you're the leader, you're, you, you've packed all your pit stuff away a long time ago. Oh, all, all the leaders, nobody's coming back to pit road. I mean, at this point, you made your one stop for the race. 
Looks like it starts right up here with Kyle Roberts making his first career truck start. He gets hooked by the 59. He gets spun down the track, and then it just blocks the track from there on in. The 13 piles in, and almost all of Express Motorsports piles into this one. Igor Zhao gets tipped onto his yeah, roof. Say, Zhao went off the 59 and, like, kick-flipped that 98 over on its lid. And Zhao, who we thought was going to be an early title favorite, not having the... <laughs> Not having a good end of the day here, landing on his lid. Let's see this again. You see the 27 runs high. Does he try to come back? It looks like he tried to come down off the corner. And the 59 had already filled the hole. The 59 of, of Derek Hamill looked like he had already filled the hole at that point. And man, these guys just pile in behind him. Yeah, Bronson Minnick, a couple of these guys actually have been in their second accident of the night. So that's a lot to, to handle for these guys. Andrew Lyons, he was right on the cut line going into this race, and now he's going to be having a lot of damage. Goodness. Yeah, that's, that's, that's Lyons' second one that he's been involved in today. So, man, it's about trying to make sure that you, you, you again, keep clean. And some of these bubble guys are just not having the best of day today. Yeah, and Clayton Sessom, who won last time out at Irwindale, he, he's out of the race now as well. We're only going to have 30 trucks left in this race, and we're only going to have about five laps to settle the win here. Yeah, but again, we'll have to see, again, the two previous restarts we've seen in this race... The leader's tent seems to be a sitting duck. Can Michaels change the trend? Can he be the one guy in the lead to be able to hang on to the lead? It's all going to depend on the jump he gets because we've seen in the past few restarts the leader not get a good jump and then the guys behind him all just pile on. So if Michaels can get a good jump, it'll probably be his race. But if he slips up even a little bit, the two teammates behind him will be ready to strike. And Curtis, DJ Curtis, with the results we've seen out of him, the point leader coming into the day, he wants to be that first guy to two wins. You give him an opportunity, and I guarantee you he's probably going to take it. So Michaels has got to, he's got to, <laughs> again, clean up the little things. He's got to be smart here and, and get a nice little start here. We'll see what happens. Pace car is off. Michaels leads him back to the green. We're going to have five laps to settle it here at Boston. Michaels to the restart, and it looks like he's going to get away okay this time. He did get away better than what we've seen the other, the previous restart, so... I don't know. Curtis is going to try to make a run here in one and two. They're going to be side by side down the back. Going into turn three, looks like everybody's going to keep it neat and tidy for the moment, but Michaels takes a really high line through three and four. Curtis going to try and make a run, Not nothing doing there. Curtis was digging down there in three and four, but I don't think he, he closed any gap to him. And this is what they, the teammates behind cannot do. They cannot afford to race each other. And I think Grigsby took that a little too seriously yeah. because he is back way up into the chasing path. Yeah, I don't think Grigsby meant to, to give up the spot to the 66, but I think he realized the situation and got out of it to give Curtis a chance to get at the 6, but unfortunately I think it cost him a spot. It co sure, certainly cost him a chance at winning this race, but we only have three laps to go. It's going to be Curtis versus Michaels. One looking for their second career win, another looking for a win in their series debut. Coming to two laps to go, Curtis got, got to realize his opportunities are running out. Yeah, I, I honestly though I think Curtis's opportunity was on that restart. I think, I think he knows it too. He's he's trying, he's trying everything he can, and it, it ain't over till it's over. But I think Curtis's big opportunity was on that restart, and and Michaels didn't slip. He was the first one we've seen that hasn't slipped on the restart, and he did exactly what he had to do. So Curtis is going to try to make a, a run at him. I just don't know if it's. I think it's going to be too little, too late. Coming to the white flag right here, Joshua Michaels looking for his first career win and his first career start in the Turbo Truck Series. We'll see if he's able to get it done here as they barrel it off into turn one for the final time. Curtis is going to close, and Michaels, well, he 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 was the charger in the in the Superstar race, trying to get the leader. I think he's actually going to he's going to be fine this time. He's going to be on the opposite end of it. So superstar veteran Joshua Michaels gets his first truck series win and his first try. Michaels gets the job done at Boston. 
incredible stuff to get Robbers Racing their third win of the year and their second with this truck. Remember, J.D. Martin won here in this truck at Auto Club. Great stuff from Robbers Racing. Curtis and Grigsby, it wasn't quite the one-two they were hoping for, second and third, but that is going to be plenty enough for them to keep their advantage at the top of the point standings. Great stuff from them. And how about Logan Jones? We didn't talk about him pretty much the entire day. He brings it home in the top five and fourth, his best result of the season so far. And Villa Lobos completes the top five just ahead of Lassard in sixth, Gutierrez seventh, all of the Robbers trucks in the top 10. Cal Farrell, he stayed up there all day long. He gets an 8th place finish. Head of Brandon Smith and Justin Whitmer completes the top 10 tonight. But And, and, Whit and Whitmer's, Whitmer was on that one of those guys on the bubble, so this is a good, a run good for top him 10 finish for Whitmer. That's, that, that's something you need. That's what you need to be doing. But in the end, it all came down to that last restart. Michael's got the run he needed and it carried him to his first career win tonight. Absolutely. And I, I said it. I said the restart was going to be key, and, you know, Michaels did exactly what he had to do. And that he sure did. And, boy, if this is how he's going to be this weekend, I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do because he's doing the triple this weekend. All three races for Joshua Michaels, and this is how he starts it off, of a win in his Truck Series debut. So, from Ryan Griffin and from myself as well, we say goodbye from Boston International Speedway. We'll see you again in a, in a couple weeks' time at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park, the second of three road course races this season, north of the border. We'll see how do these guys get on in Bowmanville, Ontario, Canada. But for now, so long from Boston. Congrats to Joshua Michaels, who scores a big win on debut for Robbers Racing.